and welcome to my kitchen. We're here with a new episode of What's for Dinner. Now, we're going to make some pasta fagiole. Now, I know that those of you who have been fans of my channel for a long time will know that this is the very first dish that I ever did a video of and the very first upload I ever did in the What's for Dinner series. That was in March of 2009. So, I looked, it was in two parts. It was poorly done. It was poorly edited. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, I had a different camera and the sound quality is horrible. So, because I also used some copyrighted music in the beginning of that video, I wanted to get rid of that video, but I wanted to remake it. So, I have a lot of new subscribers now, and I wanted to share that with them in case they hadn't gone back and seen it. So if you'll please bear with me and allow me to redo this recipe, I have made a couple of revisions, a couple of changes, nothing major. It's still the same delicious hearty soup. And I wanted to make this today because it is Saturday afternoon and it's really cold here today. There's a big snowstorm in the northeast and uh, we're getting residual effects of that down here in North Carolina. And uh, I don't know what the temperature has been all day, but it's been cold. Uh, cold enough for me to wear a jacket and I'm very warm blooded and I don't usually wear a jacket. So um, it was warm enough, uh, cold enough for me to put on a jacket. But anyway, let's see what goes into a pasta fajol. I have everything that we need right here with the exception of my spices and we'll go over those later. A two pound package of ground beef. I have two 28 ounce cans of crushed tomato and these are called ground tomatoes. So I guess it's sim similarly the same as a, as a crushed. I'm going to use one entire can of tomato paste. I have one very large onion that I've chopped. I have four cloves of garlic that are chopped fine. I have two cans of red kidney beans that I have drained. And I have four cups of water to which I have added some beef bouillon. Now for those of you who aren't aware, if you go to the Latin um, food section of your grocery store or your Walmart, you can find this type of bouillon. It's a granule and these are usually really cheap, like less than two dollars, and bouillon can be really expensive. And this is very flavorful, and inexpensive is my favorite part. And it doesn't have a lot of crap in it. So, the bottom line is, any of you who are going to tell me it has MSG in it, yeah, it does, but sometimes we have to make trade-offs, and we can't, we can only do the best we can. And because my wallet says I can afford that, and it is tasty. We're going to go for it this time. And also some ditalini or some shortcut pasta. That's what we're going to put in this later. So what we're going to do first is we're going to come over here. I have a stock pot where I have heating about two tablespoons of olive oil. I love how the oil, how the oil smells. It smells great. And we're going to put our onion in first. And we're going to put our garlic in next so that we don't burn our garlic. I know I say that every time, but that's the truth, because these onions are going to bring the temperature of that olive oil down just a little bit. I have my burner on medium, which is a five on my stove. In with our garlic, fantastic, and that's going to start to smell really good. Now I'm going to put in my spices, because we want those essential oils to come out of our spices. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of oregano, the same of basil, the same of parsley flakes, about a teaspoon of thyme. about a teaspoon of rosemary leaves that we're going to um, just put in my hand here and we're going to crush them. Nobody wants to bite into a whole rosemary needle which these are a member of the evergreen family and they are like little pine trees. Nobody wants to bite into that so you can use ground rosemary. Oh my goodness that smells so good. Um, I'm going to throw in for good measure about a teaspoon of rubbed sage, and 
ones, let's see. These are really tiny. Some bay leaf. You can use ground bay leaf if you like. Get those going in there. And then I'm also going to add some um, crushed red pepper flakes. Oh man, I wish you could smell this. This is wonderful. And you can smell all of those herbs that I just put in there. Mm. We're not going to add salt until the end because I'm using a bouillon powder and that does tend to have a bit of salt in it. And we're also going to use something else, which I'll show you in a minute, that's going to help to flavor this soup. And it's also going to lend a little thickener to it. Not too much because we're going to cook some pasta in here, so that's all right. Um, and it's going to lend its flavor to it and some saltiness as well. Okay, I've got my ground beef here. And it's probably still a little bit frozen in the center, but that's all right because it'll come, it'll cook out no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this ground beef to brown completely. And then when that is done, I will come back and we will proceed with the remainder of the recipe. Okay, we're back. And honestly, it's probably been about 15 minutes. That big chunk of meat that was still frozen, I fished out with a wooden spoon and I stuck it in the microwave on 50% power for three minutes. And it was perfect. And I wanted to make sure everything was good and cooked. So this is our can of tomato paste. This is going to help thicken it, and it's also going to help add some fabulous tomato intensity to it. Get that in there. What's the matter, Sam? What's the matter, baby? Oh. Let me get this incorporated in there real well. And I'd like to put this in now because then I can get it kind of broken up, um, mixed in with that meat, and it's going to coat that meat. Then when I put the other liquid in here, it's not going to glop all up, and it'll be easier for it to dissolve. Then I'll know that it's evenly distributed. It's starting to smell wonderful. Okay, so in goes one can of our crushed tomato. Here goes the other can of our crushed tomato. Well, look at that. These cans do not have plastic on the inside. Hot dog. I'm going to save those. Mm -hmm. We're going to bake some things in those. If you have cans that you find that don't have the lining of um, that BPA plastic cancer causing yeah, the lining. White, the white lining in it? Yes, mm -hmm. it's horrible. You shouldn't, um, it, it's horrible. But anyway, you can wash these in your dishwasher. And then you can bake like banana bread or pumpkin bread in these and then wrap them in a cellophane and give them to your neighbors and you can wrap like scrapbook paper around the outside. It's wonderful and it saves you from having to buy the foil pans. So now, from now on, I have to get this brand. And just so you know, this was Classico. What did they call it? They called it something. It wasn't crushed. I just said it earlier. It was ground. Classical ground tomatoes. They also had a diced tomato. And this right here, look at that. It just looks like a nice spaghetti sauce mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, just making that. Okay, so in go our beans. Stir those in. And this is too thick to be a soup. So now we have to add, oops, sorry, honey. We have to add our water. And we're going to do all four cups of this water because then we're going to add that pasta later. And it's going to absorb some of that liquid. And I may actually add more water 
I may add two more cups of water. And you're going to make a lot of soup, but you know what? You can put this in the freezer. You could can this if you so chose to. And it would be wonderful. We are going to add one more. In fact, I am going to add two more cups of water. Because I am uncomfortable with the amount of water in there. I think I usually add one can of tomatoes, but it doesn't make any, never mind. It's, it's still going to be perfect. This is one of those soups you... <laughs> can you really mess up a soup? I really don't yeah. think you can. Unless it has is completely void of flavor, then you've messed it up. That's what I want to think you're saying. I know. Well, once we get the pasta in there, it's going to be perfect. Now for my secret ingredient. And you may oh. or may not be able to find that. They can't look. What? Is she going to Oh, they, they can look. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know what that is? Oh, oh, I know, I know. Do you? What is it? They can tell me. Okay. This is the rind of one of those giant $300 wheels of Parmigiano Reggiano that they sell in the specialty deli at my better grocery store, Harris Teeter. Now, I'm going to stick that right in there. That is a salty cheese rind, and it's going to simmer in there. We're not going to eat this. We're not going to eat this at all. Now, the cheese rind is not wax. It's actually built up, dried out cheese from the aging process. I'm not sure how long the Parmigiano Reggiano ages for, but it's a pretty long time. Um, and it builds up this fabulous thick rind on the outside. And you probably could grate this, this part, but when they cut this or grate it or the, however they sell it in the store, I buy these. Um, sometimes it's difficult to find. Some people actually throw this away. Oh. Um, but I'll show you. Here's a. This is how they sell it. Rind. And then this one, they sell it by the pound, and they sell it, it's $6.99 a pound, which is less than they sell the cheese for, but um, these rinds will go a long way. I just put them in a plastic bag, I stick them in my freezer. It's basically for flavor. And it is for flavor. It's going to lend a little thickener, but not much, and it's going to add that salty, briny flavor of the cheese into the soup without actually having to put cheese in the base. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk away from this for 30 to 45 minutes. We're going to make some breadsticks. We'll throw those in the oven. We're going to clean up. We're going to let this simmer and then we're going to come back and you know what we're going to do then. We're going to fix you a bowl of this delicious Parmigiano Re Reggiano laden tomatoey delicious pasta fagiole. Oh wait. I can't bring you back yet. We have to come back and put the, the pasta in it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just fajo. Mm -hmm. Well, phooey. See, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, I'll come back when it's time to put the pasta in, and I'll stop being dramatic. I'll All see right, you in a bit. It's been simmering about a half an hour. And let's see, I, I just had that, that piece of Parmesan rind. It's softened up, so it's kind of floating in there. There it is. See what that looks like? It really does lend a fabulous flavor. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm going to take it out. Because I'm going to put my pasta in. This is a cup and a half of Ditalini pasta. You can use macaroni. You can use assini di pepe. You can use uh, little tiny baby shells. You can use any kind of small, shortcut pasta you want. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. And we're going to let that simmer until it's softened and ready to eat. Then we're going to take our breadsticks out of the oven. And we're going to come back and we're going to fix you a bowl of this delicious pasta fagiole. So we'll be back in just a little while. All right, our pasta fagiole is all ready to have for supper. We cooked it. I cooked it. And I, I stayed here and I stirred it occasionally because I didn't want the pasta to stick to the bottom of the pot. I had it on a very medium low heat and I babysat this while my breadsticks were cooking in the oven, which there they are. And then I turned the heat off and I pulled these out at the same time. I turned the heat off on the soup and I just let them sit here for about 10 minutes to let everything kind of rest. 
And I'm pulling out bay leaves. And now we're going to fix you a bowl of this deliciousness. This is such a delicious hearty soup. It's like an Italian chili mac, you know, and it's so flavorful and delicious. It's almost the perfect day for it. And it is almost the perfect day for it. Let's go over here. And get you a spoon. And I'm going to put some parmesan. Well, this is grated Romano. Oh my goodness. Molly has decided to put some Halloween makeup on her face. And Sissy is barking at her because she doesn't like it. Okay, that's enough. You'll pardon our dogs. Pasta Fajol, a remake and a redo because I couldn't stand the old video. I hope you try this and I hope you enjoy it. And until next time, I'll 